Welcome everybody to the November TDL member forum. My name is Christy Park. I'm the executive director of the Texas Digital Library. Hope everybody's having a good November and good last week before holiday week. It's uh, I don't know about you all, but it's pretty busy time um, around here getting ready for the holidays. As we gather, um, we just want to uh, start as we normally do by acknowledging the places we're joining from, all located on the indigenous lands of Turtle Island, the na ancestral name for what is now called North America. I'm joining from Austin, where the Tonkawa were among the traditional stewards of the land, and invite you to share your own land acknowledgements in chat if you'd like to. We'll follow our usual agenda and um, You'll hear from, from me, of course, and from our Deputy Director, Courtney Muma, as we go through some uh, a few updates about services, projects, and other initiatives going on at TDL. Um, so uh, I'll start with some director's updates, and I added this late-breaking photo from our TDL staff retreat, uh, which took place earlier this week. We had all of our staff um, who are spread out all over Texas and some outside of Texas come into Austin um, for meetings and 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 just to be together Monday and Tuesday this week. So it was really good to have everybody together. Courtney didn't make the the selfie, unfortunately, but um, she was there too. So we had a really um, good and productive couple of days of uh, working together and setting goals and and talking about um, and problem solving and all the things that uh, you do when you see each other in person. We also um, recently uh, met with our governing board. The TDL governing board had its fall meeting virtually on November 4th. And this slide shows the current board members uh, for the current academic year. Our chair is Julie Mosbo Balestro from Texas A&M. Um, Kelly Visnack from Texas State University was elected vice chair, chair elect for uh, at this meeting. And Holly Jeffcoat was elected for a two year term as secretary treasurer. Holly's from uh, SMU. So we had a, a good, a great meeting. Um, one of the things we talked about at this meeting and, and, uh, and discussed and voted on were our strategic directions um, for the current year through 2028. Excuse me. Um, if you remember, we had a strategic directions task force that um, was charged by the board last fall with developing new strategic directions that articulate actions we need to implement to achieve our vision of becoming a nationally recognized leader as a provider of essential, equitable, and sustainable infrastructure for libraries, um, and to transform society through the radical broadening of access to research, teaching, and cultural heritage materials. So this task force was led by board member Diane Bruxfort, the Dean of Libraries at UNT, and was composed of myself and Courtney, as well as Adrian Shapiro from Texas Women's, Posey Agard from UTSA, Bethany Scott from the University of Houston, and Catherine Rodowski from a and Corpus Christi. And this task force um, held discussions and gathered information from staff and from the membership through a survey in the spring of 2024 to gather information about the needs of our members and the directions you'd like to see us go. So looking at those results, the task force saw four areas of work kind of rising to the top as areas of focus for TDL going forward over the next few years. Those are listed here. Um, they're research data management, digital preservation, professional development and collaboration and networking. And um, those kind of areas inform the strategic directions that I'll walk through here over the next four slides. So strategic direction number one is elevate digital library experts. 
Um, with this direction, TDL will offer meaningful opportunities for the professional development of member librarians, archivists, and staff in areas relevant to digital library practice and leadership. The second strategic direction is cultivate connection. TDL will provide opportunities for libraries and library workers to activate community networks, offer mutual support, and find opportunities for cross-institutional collaboration. <clears throat> Our third direction is empower fair data sharing, fair meaning findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Um, TDL will support open access and open science through the maintenance and expansion of research data services offered via the Texas Data Repository. And fourth and finally is preserve long-term access. We'll help libraries preserve their valuable digital collections for future generations through digital preservation, advocacy, readiness activities, and distributed storage services. So our four strategic directions focus on the path forward for building out our service suite in speci some specific ways, like with the TDR and our digital preservation services. But I want to emphasize that though it's not explicitly articulated in these four statements, we maintain our commitment to strengthening and maintaining other core services like DSpace hosting, Vireo hosting, and Vireo development which are absolutely essential to our mission of supporting open access to research, cultural heritage, um, educational resources, and other digital materials. So our, our next steps with our planning is are to operationalize these high-level strategic directions to articulate concrete objectives that will determine our work and focus in the coming years. And we'll be presenting those in the spring and we'll keep you posted as we progress with that work and, and as we, you know, meet and achieve those strategic objectives over time. So, um, this is just kind of the first time we'll talk about this. Happy to answer questions at the end of the presentation um, if you have them. But for now, next we'll move into our services and projects updates and uh, we'll start with digital repositories. So first off, um, we completed upgrades of all of our hosted repositories to DSpace 762 um, late last month. Uh, this upgrade included accessibility fixes, some performance improvements, and some fixes to the single submission item forms. Uh, you can see more about all the fixes and improvements in the release notes, and we'll post a link to those in chat. And big thank you to our DSpace tech lead, Nick Woodward, for um, getting all those repositories upgraded in a pretty painless fashion for everyone. Secondly, a reminder about the paper pledge for the planet. We talked about this in the last forum. This is a global effort to activate, to use institutional repositories as tools for climate action led by the Coalition of Open Access Repositories, or CORE. CORE has created a list of climate science articles that are currently behind a paywall, but they could be made openly accessible in institutional repositories. And on that list, there's like 3,500, 4,000 articles on that list. More than 400 of them have first authors based at a U.S. institution, and then a subset of that 400 have authors from Texas-based institutions. And so we're asking our members to participate in the paper pledge by reviewing that spreadsheet for articles with authors at your institution, and then uh, working to reach out to those authors and solicit deposit of those articles in your institutional repository. We'll put a link to the spreadsheet in chat. Um, along with a number of resources. CORE has created template emails you can use for doing outreach. Um, they've also uh, pulled together some promotional resources that you can use. We want you to let TDL know if you have any successes with this process um, when you are able to uh, get uh, a researcher to deposit an item in the repository. And we also just encourage people to 
generally promote the initiative on your campus. This is a really great opportunity to elevate the profile of your institutional repository and remind faculty and others on campus of the value of open research and open science to solve the world's big problems. Before I pass it on to Courtney for some Vireo updates, um, one more repositories related note for me, and that is a reminder that the Open Repositories 2025 call for proposals is open through December 18th. OR25 is in Chicago um, in June, June 15th through 18th, and I hope we'll have lots of TDL representation in attendance there and on the program. So um, if you have ideas for presenting on your repository work or our repository work together, uh, we'd love to see you submit a proposal. We will be using our November 9th DSpace user group meeting as a proposal planning session. So if you're interested in working on proposals for OR25 during that time, we hope you'll, you'll join us for that meeting. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Courtney, who just looked like she was fighting a fly there in her workspace to uh, continue with updates on Vireo and other services. It's like the size, it's like four times a regular fly size, <laughs> and I did not get it. Just in case anyone <laughs> is wondering, um, yeah, I'm gonna st I'm gonna just start with some um, Dario updates, and then I've got some digital preservation and TDR updates as well. Um, so first things first. Um, our Vireo members experienced two service disruptions over the last few weeks, and I'd like to update you on what happened there. Um, TDL's Amazon email credentials were accessed by bad actors who launched a phishing attack from within our infrastructure. This happened twice, once on October 28th and then once on November 4th. After the October 28th incident, we took steps to address it to address it, but um, and that included rotating our email credentials and taking what we believe to be the offending sandbox incident offline. But unfortunately, it happened again on November 4th. Um, and then after the second incident, we were better able to pinpoint the issue, um, which was a vulnerability in the Vireo 4 code that left those email credentials exposed. The Vireo development team worked urgently to address the issue in the Vireo code and applied that code fix to all of our hosted Vireo 4 instances within a matter of hours. That code fix came in the form of a new release, version 4.2.10. We also notified the open source community of Vireo users of the vulnerability and the code fixes so that they could get ahead of it as well. Our investigation of the incident shows no evidence that student or other user data was affected by the incident. Only email functionality was affected. We are really grateful for your cooperation and patience during these events. TDL is still reviewing the incident and our procedures and practices to prevent another such incident and hone our response procedures as well. Next up, I've got an update on digital preservation. Um, so on World Digital Preservation Day last week, TDL shared results from the Digital Preservation Services Collaborative Planning Project, Sustainable Community-Owned Partnerships in Digital Preservation, which was an IMLS planning grant. In particular, um, we shared the high-level findings and how TDL plans to address the actions proposed in the final report. So um, I'll share in chat here the blog post um, and also a link to the grant and the final report. So you can check that out. And um, also in the blog post, we provide more details about how D TDL will work towards the report's goals, which focus on advocacy and readiness as a service strategies. So to help achieve readiness in the TDL community, one thing we're doing in the coming year um, is launching a peer audit and assessment program in January. Kristen Clark from TWU will lead staff from UTSA and um, Sam Houston State University through self and peer audits based on tools provided by the Northeast Document Conservation Center's peer assessment. 
Having participated in such an assessment last year herself, Kristen will lead her peers through several months of shared assessment tasks, culminating in clear objectives for their digital preservation programs. I'm excited to be a part of that and especially excited that Kristen is willing to take the lead on this. We're hoping it's a reproducible um, audit and assessment that we can do over time with other institutions. And I'm gonna share with you um, the wiki page that we've started about that outlines the goals of that peer audit and assessment. Really excited about it. Finally, I'm going to give you an update about the TDR. Um, so the Texas Data Repository Steering Committee, um, some of you may know, has been progressing on their project towards accommodating a service for larger data sets. TDL is preparing to ask for bids from contractors to work, work with the larger data subcommittee of the TDR, as well as TDL staff on goals set out by the Texas Data Repository Steering Committee. The larger data subcommittee has already begun working on its portion of the project, so they'll be well prepared for the developer. We're excited about this and you'll hear more about it as we progress on the project. And with that, we'll move into our community updates. Christy's now had a break, so back to you, Christy. All right, thanks, Courtney. So first off, uh, we'd like to invite you to meet the TCDL 2025 Planning Committee, some of whom are pictured here on the side, um, and everybody's listed. <clears throat> The TCDL Planning Committee defines the conference each year by developing a theme, identifying a keynote speaker, and crafting a call for proposals um, to invite colleagues from our community to come together for the conference. So we'll include a link in the chat so you can read more in our Meet the Committee blog post about some of this year's committee members and, and put faces to names. Uh, this is a great group and they're doing great work uh, to get ready for the conference in the spring. Speaking of which, <clears throat> the call for proposals for the 2025 Texas Conference on Digital Libraries is live. So we invite you to join us there in May, May 20th through the 22nd, to reflect on how far we've come as a community, review current roadmaps, and discuss plans for the future. Um, we invite folks to consider how collaboration and engagement both within and beyond the TDL community can highlight our shared success. So that submission deadline for proposals is Sunday, February 23rd. So you've got plenty of time, but get working now to get those proposals crafted and um, submitted to, T to the TCDL planning committee. And we'll put a link in chat to learn more about topic ideas and presentation types. We'll also share the proposal submission form with you there. We also want to encourage you to submit nominations for the 2025 TDL Awards, which honor Texas-based individuals and groups that have made outstanding contributions to the advancement of digital libraries. Um, if you know somebody or if you are somebody um, who has been doing awesome work in the past year and, and want to be recognized or have someone recognized, please consider nominating them. This is a great way to recognize and acknowledge your colleagues, even if they don't aren't selected for the award. It's a wonderful thing to be nominated for an award like this. Um, we want to recognize um, great work and, and great people and give our community a chance to learn about their efforts. The nominations for this these awards are due by February 10th, 2025, and there's going to be a link in chat where you can learn more about how what that process is like. Next up, we are just extremely excited to announce two new TDL interest groups that are going to be launching in the new year. Um, the first one is a harmful content and description interest group, and the second is an open knowledge interest group. So I'm going to, I'll talk a little bit about each one. 
The TDL Harmful Content and Description Interest Group will aim to help members mitigate harm and implement just and ethical practices in libraries and archives collections. It is co-chaired by Elliot Williams from UT San Antonio and Carla Roig Blay from UT Austin. And this group is going to provide a venue for discussion, development of best practices around um, topics such as addressing harmful content and language, and implementing inclusive and reparative metadata practices. Participation in this group is open to everyone, regardless of membership in TDL. The group's going to meet quarterly, and um, there will be more detail sent out to our TDL lists and, and on the website. Um, the other group is we're calling the Open Knowledge Interest Group. And it will provide a community for exploring topics related to open access, broadly interpreted to encompass the traditional definition of open access, meaning free online access to research outputs using open licenses, and the ways that the principles of OA intersect with other flavors of open, like open education and open data, open science, etc. The goal of this group is to create opportunities for learning and discussion on OA topics and identify areas for collective action to advance open access. Um, obviously, as a consortium providing a shared infrastructure that enables open access, the aims of this group are core to the mission of TDL, and we're really excited to uh, get it going. Alexa Height from Texas State University is the chair for this group. And for both of these groups, meetings will, um, they'll launch formally with meetings in early 2025. We're going to put in chat some links to email listservs for each group where you can subscribe um, so that you are um, in the loop with activities with this group as they get started, and we'll be sharing upcoming announcements and, and updates over the coming weeks and months. Here is a list of additional upcoming meetings and events happening at TDL. Um, these are free and open to anyone. You're always welcome to invite your campus partners, non-TDL colleagues in your network if you'd like to. Um, we have the GIS interest group meeting um, this week on Friday and uh, really encourage you to uh, participate in those meetings. That's a really great fun group. I got a chance to attend the GIS, um, pre-GIS day event last week, which was just wonderful. Um, and you can attend their regular meeting on Friday and see what they're getting up to over the coming months. The DSpace Users Group meets on Monday, November 25th. I think I had that date wrong on my previous slide. It is Monday, November 25th, um, where we'll be planning our open repositories proposals. Uh, OJS User Group on December 5th. And then again, the DSpace Users Group meeting will meet one last time for our kind of regular meeting on December 9th before the holiday. Um, we also have an OER Users Group meeting coming up in December, and the Imaging Group is doing another Around To It meeting, co-working session in, um, on December 12th. So you can check all of our events and meetings at, on the website at tdl.org slash events. You can also check out the latest TDL updates and announcements on our social media channels and in our bi-monthly newsletter emails and listservs. We have an, an newsletter coming out later this week, so be on the lookout for that. We'll share the link to our Get Involved page in the chat, um, and you can learn more about where you can connect with TDL. If you would like to contribute news, announcements, updates, or other content to an upcoming issue of the TDL newsletter, we'd love to hear that from you too. You can email info at tdl.org with your ideas and Kiera will work those into upcoming, communica upcoming communications from TDL. And I think that's it for community updates. Um, we have some time for questions, if anybody has any. Um, while you get your questions ready, I just want to remind you about the TDL suggestion box. 
comments. If you have feedback or suggestions you'd like to give to TDL, we hope you'll use that suggestion box to communicate with us. Um, and a reminder that comments made through the suggestion box can be anonymous if you choose. I'll pause there and see if there are any questions. You can raise your hand if you want to ask it verbally or put something in chat. Hi, Christy. I don't have Hi. a question, but I just want to shout out to Colleen for already responding to the doodle poll for <laughs> when to have our initial meeting for the open knowledge group. So awesome. shout out to Colleen. I love it. Thank you. Colleen is always on it. That's great. Yeah, I'm pumped too, Colleen. That's going to be a great group. So there is a doodle poll out there. Make sure you you uh, indicate availability if you're interested in joining that kickoff meeting for the open knowledge group. <laughs> Anybody else? I'll just pause for just another minute. Does Elliot have a doodle poll? <laughs> Elliot, are you here? I am here. We do not have a doodle poll. I'm sorry, question mark. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you need to be sorry about that. But we are we are planning our first meeting for um, January. So there should be um, more info about that coming soon. Okay, good deal. Thanks, Elliot. Okay. Well, seeing no further questions, we'll wrap it up here, but um, thank you all for taking the time and, and spending some time with us today. I will mention we are going to hold the December forum. It's like the last week before the winter break. Um, we're going to go ahead and hold that time, but we're going to make the December forum more of a December TDL hangout. So it will be a very informal time to just kind of visit, talk, and um, ease our way into the winter break, hopefully. Um, so we'll, we'll send out more detail about that as we get closer. Hope everybody has a wonderful uh, mini break next week um, for the Thanksgiving holiday and a great end to the calendar year. Always good to see you and we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.